My name is Father Christopher Plant. I am the pastor of Resurrection Church, and I am a priest of the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. St. Joseph helps us to deal with something that we probably all experience at times, which is uh, to have the feeling of unworthiness. So sometimes we get gifts from God, and the Lord is inviting us to something really profound, really true and good, and then we say, I don't feel worthy. And I, I know that sometimes I'm asking people to, um, you know, do something for the church, for example, to be a communion minister, and they say, oh, Father, I just, I just, don't, feel, I just don't feel like I'm worthy or holy enough. And then, okay, that's, that's one thing. And then it gets really, uh, really profound or really problematic when people want to come back to church, for example, and they, and they say, you know, Father, I, I want to come back to church, but I've committed so many sins. Or they're afraid to come to confession because they've committed so many sins. And so there's this resistance. There's this resistance to receive good things from the Lord because of a sense of unworthiness. Well, good old St. Joseph helps us deal with that. Uh, in the first chapter of Matthew, we hear about the story of the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel to St. Joseph. And we hear the Angel Gabriel speak to him. Before we get into that, though, I think it's helpful for us to understand the story. Uh, to really understand it, we have to look at some of what scholars have said, uh, as well as the Church Fathers, what they have said about the story of the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel to St. Joseph, as well as his character. And St. Joseph is a very fascinating character, and he's also very blessed, and he's a very holy man. That's how we understand him. There's three things that we take into consideration when we talk about St. Joseph and what we get from the scriptures. Number one, he was definitely a true and just and righteous man, which meant he was true and just before God. He believed that he, that he was a servant of the Lord. And we, we see that from the scriptures. Uh, number two, it's important to understand that when it came to the question of Mary, that he had a very profound sense uh, of something going on that was holy. I'll get into that later. So what he wanted to do, he wanted to make sure not to expose what was happening. He didn't want to expose what was happening in regards to Mary and this very mysterious conception that happens inside of her. And then finally, number three, what he, uh, what he wants to do is he wants to put her away quietly. So he doesn't want this to be a big to-do where everybody's looking and, and there's all kinds of shame and exposure. Now, there are three reasons that are proposed as to why St. Joseph would want to separate himself from the Blessed Virgin Mary. The first one we hear from uh, St. Uh, St. Augustine and also St. Ambrose, who said that Joseph wanted to separate himself from Mary because he thought that she had been unfaithful. So that's the first theory that we hear, or I should say the first interpretation. Second interpretation we hear from St. Jerome, who said that St. Joseph he knew that something strange was going on, he didn't know exactly, but he was convinced of her innocence. And so for that reason, he wanted to separate himself from Mary. The third interpretation that we have heard before, we hear from St. Thomas Aquinas, as well as uh, from St. Bernard, and uh, from other saints, and also from uh, contemporary scholars, such as Ignacio de la Poterie. Uh, they would say that St. Joseph knew in the depths of his heart that something absolutely incredible was happening by the power of the Holy Spirit and that Mary was found with child through a virginal conception, which is incredible that he would even know that. Now, without getting too much into the uh, reasons or the arguments proposed by some who would say this is why this interpretation is the most likely, the most reasonable according to our tradition and the reading of scripture. I'll just focus on simply one thing. We hear the angel Gabriel saying to Saint Joseph in the dream, certainly the Holy Spirit is with you. Now the scriptures that we read in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 don't necessarily show the words in that way, but looking at, at the Greek text, uh, scholars would look at that and say that the angel Gabriel meant that as a, as a confirmation to St. Joseph that certainly the Holy Spirit was the one at work in the conception of this child within the womb of his spouse Mary. And by implication, therefore, the Holy Spirit is also at work with St. Joseph. Now, taking that third interpretation and seeing some of the reasoning behind why we would see St. Joseph in that way, we can then pierce into the mystery 
of a man who felt like he was unworthy. Just like us, when we feel unworthy of receiving gifts from the Lord. We can learn more about St. Joseph by comparing him, for example, to Ahaz. Ahaz was approached by our Lord, and he was also told that he was to receive a profound gift. So both St. Joseph and King Ahaz were the same in that way. Having said that, when the Lord tells Ahaz, ask for a sign, he says, ask for a sign. Whatever you want it to be, it can be as big as the sky. How does Ahaz respond? Ah, Lord, who am I to ask you for a sign? I will not. And how does God respond? Ahaz, you make me very weary. Why do you annoy me so? We can say that he was annoyed by it. It just reminds me of my grandparents. They would take me out to eat um, when I was a kid and all throughout my youth, and they always picked up the check. And they were very generous in that way. Eventually, I became a priest and started making the big bucks. Actually, not really, but had some money, and I was able to, have, I was able to eventually uh, pick up the check myself. And so when we went out to eat one morning, we were having some breakfast at the end of the meal. I picked up the check. I said, Grandpa, I'll take it. But my grandpa snapped the check out of my hand and he said, I don't think so. I'm your grandfather and that's the way it is. I said, okay, and I let him pay. Why would he respond that way? Well, because he loves me and he wants to be generous. And so for that reason, he felt great emotion when he said, I want to be generous. I want to pick up this tab. The same thing happens with the Lord, with King Ahaz. The Lord says, ask for a sign. He says, no, I, who am I? I? I don't want to. And he says, I, you, you make me very weary. And he gives him the sign anyway. And he says, this is the sign that I will provide to you. A child will be born and his name will be Emmanuel. And we know what Emmanuel means. It means God with us. We know that Emmanuel is the Son of God incarnate. God with us in Jesus Christ. Ahaz rejected the sign God gave it anyway. Now St. Joseph also from the Lord through the angel Gabriel hears these words. Indeed, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary is found with child and, angel, and the angel Gabriel says, do not be afraid to take Mary into your own home. In other words, just like with Ahaz, so it is with Joseph, God says to both of them, it is my will, it is my desire that you receive this great gift that I want to give to you. St. Joseph was different from Ahaz because he accepted it. And we know that made all the difference in the world. St. Joseph took Mary into his own home. He allowed God to pick up the check, so to speak. We can learn from St. Joseph by following that example, not to have the attitude of King Ahaz but to set aside our sense of unworthiness and accept God's great love for us and his great plans for us. Indeed, he wants to pick up the check. So let's let him. And let's not be afraid to take Mary and Jesus into our own homes. <laughs>